All right, our first interview of the morning, and much has happened in the last couple of weeks, hasn't it, in uh, politics? We have had uh, Hipkins confirmed this week, uh, last week, sworn in as uh, the new Prime Minister. A reshuffle yesterday, a, a rearranging of the cards, the deck of cards that he plays the election, his election game of poker with. Uh, and also, I guess, some, hol- some politics around Auckland and what is going on uh, with Auckland as well. What does this all mean? How's it all playing out? We were joined by a good friend of the platform and the director of the Democracy Project, political lecturer at Victoria University, uh, Bryce Edwards. Bryce, are you a professor or a doctor or a what? Oh, I don't really mind what people call me, Sean, but I'm, I'm a doctor. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Lecturer, Edwards. doctor. Yep. Mm. Whatever you want to call me. Yeah, Bryce. Is Bryce is okay, though, between us, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, a- absolutely. Yeah. Bryce, so let, let's just first up the reshuffle. Um, doesn't seem that radical uh, to me. It seems like he's sure arranged got some of his mates in there. Um, but it's not like a, a whole generational change, is it? Well, there is a bit of a generational change with quite a few uh, fresher ministers brought into the the ministry and elevated, especially onto that front bench. But, yeah, mainly it is shifting around faces rather than um, a complete uh, reshuffle. So uh, I think Hopkins has made a lot of changing the, the cabinet rankings. So the numbers of the hierarchy. And, um, I mean, the, the, the top five places are pretty much unchanged though so um you know it's a bit of he mixed it up with a, yeah, yeah. a bit of continuity yeah and we a, call it about the ranking but they don't get paid any different depending on you know whether they're number five or number 12 do they no they don't Absolutely and they not. don't get uh, any more vote around the cabinet table no but they get a bit more like what bragging uh, rights do they get in the queue for the for the for the you know buffet at, at the ah. na- at the labor party conference or what it just seems oh, to me you know no, there's no doubt about it well when Will jackson is number seven or whatever he is he has more moral authority both oh, okay. with his colleagues and the public than if he's number 19. All right. So, uh, you know, it does it does make some difference, and a lot of it's internal politicking, of course. Um, but uh, no, it does send some sorts of uh, signal messages about, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, like who's on top, who has power, yeah. and um, and and the fact that Willie Jackson, Kerry Allen went up was, you know, really a balance, I think, to the demotion of oh, Nanaya Mahuta, who has been yeah. without doubt the most problematic minister. Uh, there's yeah. been no acknowledgement of this from Labor. Um, uh, well, she, it was a pretty big acknowledgement. We oh, she by demoting. Job. Demo- um, well, she lost local demoting. government yeah. and, and she's demoted, but she's still the Minister of Foreign Affairs, which is a plum. That's a plum of a job, isn't Look, it? I, I just... Uh, it is, but not so much for someone that doesn't like travelling and someone yeah. who's never really had any huge well, in foreign affairs. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Uh, no, I, I saw this as a huge slap in the face for Mahuta yesterday. Yeah. And you know, she will be humiliated by this, losing local government. And not just that, but being thrown down the caucus, uh, sorry, the cabinet list to number 16. And so that really does indicate how much Hipkins and his colleagues feel about Mahuta and her role in Three Waters, and especially that entrenchment debacle. And the fact that she fibbed. Year. She fibbed about that. She did. Yeah. Um, and she she conspired. She, you know, tried to get that across the line, and she misled her colleagues, and now they are upset with her. Yeah. Um, Why didn't they just chuck her out of Cabinet entirely? And I would have said for the wider electorate, that would have... Um, yeah. Been good for Chris Hopkins. Why didn't they just lance the boil, get rid of her? Well, no, I think that would have been a step too far for many in the party, especially yeah. the Murray Caucus. Um, you know, that would have been a declaration of war. It's, I mean, he, he's been subtle. He's been diplomatically sending her towards retirement and taking away her, her mana, really. So it's yeah. a pretty big thing. Yeah. Um, but no, he has to sort of balance things and keep things kind of professional. Yeah, and Willie Jackson goes up up the pecking order. Oh, by the way, the re- replacement of Nanaya Mahuti with Karen McNulty, does that also give 
Kieran McNulty, who is a kind of an insider and matey with Hipkins, from what I can understand, and with Jacinda, and he's yep. the whip. Does that mean he can, because it's not his policy, it might make him easy, easier for him to modify, halt, roll back three waters? I think he's been given that job of, yes, um, making it, um, well, actually changing it, yeah. policy, and, and then selling it. And I think he will be good for both of those things. Uh, I mean, in the end, it's not really his decision on how much Three Waters gets reformed. It will be the biggest decision, you know, that this government faces this year, I think, mm -hmm. is, you know, the co-governance uh, issue, whether to take it out or leave it in. I, mm -hmm. I think they'll take it out. Um, and there'll be a few other tweaks to it. Um, but it's that co-governance one that is the, the big problem with Three Waters. And... I think he'll do a good job of then selling it to uh, rural audiences in particular that are upset. Actually, all, all of uh, New Zealand and the provinces. Um, and yeah, he, he's a pretty solid uh, communicator and yeah, I think his reputation is going up, McNulty. Okay. Michael Wood, is it Wood or Woods? I never remember. Michael Woods. Wood. Wood. It's just yep. Wood. Um, it's just Wood. No, he's on the Wood. Okay, no, that's Megan Woods. We're thinking of yep. Woods. Yeah, okay, Michael. It's so confusing. If they could just have you know, Minister Number One. Okay, Michael Wood, Minister for Auckland. Why does Auckland need a friggin' minister? Is that because Phil Goff, who effectively was, isn't the mayor anymore? Um, I mean, we've had this before, of course. Helen Clark appointed um, who was it um, to that um, yeah. as Minister for Auckland back um, in that that government from nineteen ninety nine. Um, I guess it's an acknowledgement that it's a huge voter base. And yeah, yeah, but and therefore the it has more years. MPs. I mean, we've got a proportionate yeah. system. But, so it just seems to me that's why we have the proportionate system rather than... Oh, look, I think, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a rules about this. Um, you know, Prime Ministers can create whatever portfolios for Ministers that they want. I mean, this is political. Um, it's about the fact that Labor's seen a bit more poorly in Auckland, especially due to, you know, extended lockdowns, um, yeah. problems with public transport, light rail not, you know, <laughs> not being yeah. running, um, and then, of course, the flooding. Um, but also, I think it was probably necessary for Hipkins, as a Wellington-based uh, Prime Minister, to put a bit more weight into Auckland. Oh, I see a liaison. Um, I mean, there, there is, there's no ministry for bloody Auckland, so there's no budget associated with this. He's just a political glad, glad handler, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, that's what all ministers are. To some extent. Um, so this is a campaigning role, absolutely. It's, it's, it's more that than one of substance. So, yeah, I agree with you, you know, on this. It's just a made-up position. Right, OK, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Are there any ministries that have disappeared or ministers that have disappeared? Who's the Minister for Culture and Heritage, which was a job that uh, Jacinda Ardern had? No, no, no. Um, I don't think she had it at all. Oh, um, she didn't? I forget who had it. Oh, Sepa, Carmel no, Sepaloni. No, Carmel Sepaloni had that. She keeps that? Yeah. OK, SIS I and really everything don't. and goes to Hipkins because right, he's the Prime Minister? That's always it's with the Prime Minister. And interestingly enough, he hasn't taken up any other additional portfolios as Prime Ministers normally do. And, you know, when he was asked about this yesterday, and people sort of connected it with the fact that Ardern, you know, used to have the child poverty uh, reduction portfolio, he said he wasn't interested in having symbolic gestures. Ah, uh, okay. Which seemed like a huge sort of slap in the face for for his predecessor and, um, you know, a, and a useful one, I think, to kind of differentiate himself a bit more from Ardern. You know, she would have really grimaced hearing that. Yeah. But um, I think it was useful to say that he is not, you know, Ardern's... Uh, he's not just under Ardern, no, yeah. too. A a a and look, let's move on to the other big thing this week. Thank you for your comments on the Cabinet reshuffle. Um the polls, those two polls came out night before last, basically telling the same story, uh, Bryce, and that was that yeah, yeah. a change of leadership did give them a bit of a bump. Hipkins has done pretty well. The honeymoon's still in force. Um, and it might be a very close election. Most commentators, uh, when Ardern resigned, said this is the end of Labor. She was their only you know, big asset. Now they will, they've lost the election. Um, 
But this poll has shown that the public you know, think otherwise and that uh, this came on and that uh, Ardern really was a liability. Well, yeah. Labor, we well, yeah. Um, Which, Bryce, I think, I think feeds into a narrative, and I'm not sure if I, I, I'm overreading this, that you and I had discussed, I think we discussed with Bowman, that this wasn't a Prime Minister who was out of gas. This was a political party that said we better do something if we want to have a crack at the next election and the best thing we can do is replace our leader. Yes, they were right. Um, they had the right instincts uh, or the right focus group, you know, results. And, um, yeah, she went not because of uh, all the toxic stuff thrown her way or, uh, or anything else, but mostly... Labour were going to lose, and Ardern was going to be a defeated Prime Minister. Um, she got out, she couldn't run. Really. Yeah. Um, is she back? Uh, does this put these polls put Labour back in the game? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're in front for the first time in terms of yeah. these polls. Well, margin of error tells polls. us. Uh, Marginally, I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 And the Greens are down quite a bit in both polls. So mm. overall, the, the, the centre-right block are ahead of the centre-left. Yeah. But you know, this, this is game on, absolutely. It's mm. going to be a very close election. Um, and I, it just shows that Hopkins has momentum, and that is a lot in politics. Yeah. Well, he was so given momentum I, by, by a whole lot yeah. of media coverage and everything, and, and, and fair enough. Um, and it oh, seems to be... Yeah. He seems to be more. Well. Yeah, he seems to be more relatable to Middle New Zealand than just Andrew was. Yeah, he is, and he is saying he's going to focus on the issues that matter, mm. and that's not what we were hearing for the last year or so from the government, from Jacinda Ardern. And now, as I've said to you before, he's, he's positioning himself as being more about the working class than about the working class. Yeah. And th I think that does matter to a lot of voters. Yeah. Look, other interesting thing I thought about that poll, uh, New Zealand First nowhere near 5%. Yeah, and I think that's because Hopkins is taking on some of that sort of ethos of the working people that... Um, and sort of the maybe the non woke sort of vote yeah. that uh, that Peters was hoping to have a revival based on. So yeah, Winston Peters. I I think this was a turning point. In this poll, um, they, they really were staging a comeback for New Zealand First in yep. the recent polls. And I thought this was going to be an election year made for them, but this takes the wind out of their sails. sails. And I think this could be the, the death of the party once and for all. Yeah, look, another weird fact in that, one of the polls, I can't remember which one, Leighton Baker, the former head of the new Conservative Party, father of Chantel Baker, somewhat controversial blogger, online, yes. self-styled journalist, he, he was rating, what, 3% or more in preferred Prime Minister. Um, RNZ stupidly highlighted the story by refusing to run that fact. What, how the hell does that happen in a political poll, Bryce? I do yeah, know he's been, on, he's been on the plat platform a few times, Leighton Baker. Oh, that must be it. <laughs> Look, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I guess... Yeah, I was a bit embarrassed to uh, not be able to understand this either. Maybe <laughs> there is a sort of um, a bit of a, a, an anti-vaxxer, anti-establishment sort of mood out there that is coalescing around, you know. Yeah, um, but he's not even someone. standing for office, Leighton Baker. No, no, so it's very odd. No, I, I, look, I, I'm a bit... Yeah. OK, look, the other thing was, ACT held up. Greens and Labor traded some votes from Green to Labor. But as you say, we are clearly now looking at two blocks. A and funny, we I don't know, I just get the feeling we do take New Zealand first out of the conversation now. Um, but the other thing the polls yep. show is that we could end up in a situation, and they're only a snapshot, where the Māori Party, the Party Māori, decides who the government is. Absolutely. And although they are traditionally seen as being on the left side of the spectrum, it, it's not that simple. You know, Murray issues aren't really left-right, and as we've seen before, the Murray Party is happy to coalesce with the right and the right circumstances. So, of course, you know, John Key's government, you know, three terms, the Murray Party were there. Um, and even now, their leaders are saying that they are open to going with national. They're not ruling it out. And that they're starting to come up with their, their bottom lines that 
for negotiations with National. So, you know, it, it seems unlikely to me, but um, you know, don't rule out that they will be a potential Chris maker, as, as some pundits are saying. <laughs> oh, that's a goodie. Well, yeah. Yeah, indeed, you know. Yeah. Um, so... And do they I mean, perhaps, because I think you cannot look at the cabinet reshuffle and the new leadership of Labor and the fact that we're going to get a rollback in three waters, I cannot see how that is not going to be, if they're smart by the Māori Party, manipulated to say, vote Māori Party, forget Labor, they will turn on you, they're still the white man's party. I think there were more than two seats at the next election. Yeah, look, how many, what percentage of our population are Māori? So 16%, 16.7%, yeah. yeah. Percent. So there's a big constituency there, and the Māori Party have always, um, you know, they, they haven't really reached their potential. Uh, they they don't speak for the Māori population, even though they might claim to, um, because generally they only get about 1.5% of the vote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, and you have to remember, of course, a lot of Māori don't. Uh, the stuff that they put forward doesn't really resonate with them. And a lot of Māori are upset with Three Waters and lots of the other things that uh, the media sort of just assume that all Māori think the same. They don't. Yeah. Um, but I do agree with you that uh, that the Te Party Māori might be able to politicise some of these issues and bump their support up from one5 yeah. up to 2.5 or something, win another seat or two in the Murray electorates. Um, and we saw how volatile that uh, that constituency is. You know, you remember back to 1996 when all, what, all seven seats, was it, at that stage, I can't remember, went to New Zealand first. Um, you know, Labor doesn't have a monopoly on those seats anymore. Uh, good stuff, Bryce. Okay. Uh, look, the other thing on politics, and as you've been a commentator for a long time, Bryce, and believe it not, though, I know in your heart of hearts, you're a scheme, you know, you're an academic, so you're a screaming communist lefty, um, but yep. you can be quite objective. <laughs> what <laughs> do you make of this, un and I'm just going to call it unseemly, and I'm not saying one party or the other is to blame, this tussle between Wayne Brown and the news media in Auckland. Oh, look, it's it's becoming a bit more of a beltway thing for me, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not sure how interested we are in it. It was a big deal back on Friday when the floods were happening and he really was, um, I don't know, missing in action. He did have a lot of questions to answer. Uh, and normally politicians do quite well when they are giving a bit of biffo to the, the media and journalists. So uh, the more this happens, um, I think people will start to come back on side to Wayne Brown. He did look uh, deficient on, on Friday, but the more the media keep on hitting him, uh, I think the more people in Auckland will come back around to him. So it's, it's in his interest for this fight to keep on happening. Yeah. And, and look, we might have the, the strange thing in Wayne Brown, Bryce, a politician who genuinely doesn't give a stuff about his public image. Yeah, and that was the, a big key to his success back at the uh, the elections. Yeah. He didn't try to be likable. He just tried to be someone you know that looked competent and would get things done. But I do think that's a big problem for how he handled the floods on Friday. So, look, um, oh, it's too early to mm. to write him off or to say that you know this is the floods are going to work for him. But um, mm. yeah, it's it, it, it's been a big jolt. Yeah. Look, the other thing, Bryce, is about these polls, about the reshuffle, the Minister for Auckland, there is always a little bit of a honeymoon uh, for, for an, a, a new leader. It's entirely possible this will not last. Yeah. I, I think David Farrow did some crunching of the numbers and found that um, when there's been a change of Prime Minister over the last, what, 20 or 40 years, uh, they normally get a 4% uh, bump for the party support. Which is about um, and so what we so saw. About what, what Hopkins got, he got 5%. Um, so it's kind of what you'd expect. But I still just feel that um, it gives a lot of momentum to Hopkins and um, you know, uh, now having this reshuffle, the reset, if he does some big changes with, I, I think we've seen today that um, he's looking at bringing back the half price. Uh, yep. 
public transport, the discounts on fuel. Yeah. Um, if he if he makes some big pitch, um, you know, things like this, then yeah, I think he'll keep moving forward and and get yeah. even higher. And, and the other secondary story, Bryce, you say a body blow for New Zealand first chance of coming back this year. Yeah, I mean, well, let's see what happens with Shane Jones. I still rate him um, as a performer, um, and they just will have to now, you know, kind of recalibrate because just like National, they can't rely on the same messages working uh, that they thought would work against Ardern. Pipkins is a whole different uh, game, so they'll need to rethink things. Yeah. Good on you, Bryce. As always, mate, fascinating talking to you. You take it easy. I know you've been very busy. Take time to yep. breathe. Cheers. Bryce Edwards, political lecturer of Dr. Bryce Edwards, uh, political lecturer of Victoria University, head of the Democracy uh, Project. And I think Guy's got a pretty good handy, handle and has a nice dispassionate view on what's going on. What did you think about what Bryce had to say?